Hey guys, yesterday I woke up to a comment in my private messages on my Instagram and the message says, this is my son who was murdered in the same manner as George Floyd by two Stockton, California police officers. Except instead of a knee, it was their arm. My son was complying and being respectful and not even under arrest. They ignored his pleas telling them I can't breathe several times while they forcefully held him down and killed him. He was 29 years old. Please share his story. We are having regular peaceful protests and have another coming up May 10th with several area families. I respond with, I'm very sorry for your loss. I will work on a video for you. I hit the link that she sent me and I was appalled of what I saw. I want to read you guys some of these comments really quick. I hate intros asks, where's the rest of the video? I want to know what happened next and I wouldn't believe cops word for any of it. And Karen responds with, thank you. And yes, they are refusing to give us all the other unedited videos. There's body cams, unedited, store surveillance and dash cam that will show everything. They edit and blur to try to hide their murdering ways. We are not giving up and I will continue to expose them for what they are. Thank you for your thoughts. Later, I hit intros responds with, also, if you want more exposure of this video, I highly recommend sending a link and message to San Joaquin Valley Transparency to see if he'll feature it for you. Sometimes the more exposure, the quicker the info. I hope and pray this is all brought to light and soon. I randomly saw a Facebook friend share this video and it infuriated me. I don't know how I had never heard of this before now. Stay strong, you and those babies will be in my thoughts. I'm gonna show you guys some of the video and then I'm gonna show you guys clips that his mom put together. And one of the clips I hear his kids saying that they love their dad and that broke my heart, folks. Let's all go give Karen Sutherland the support that she needs and let's bring her the court of public opinion. Thank you guys. You paying for it? Let's get outside, keep your hands where I can see them. Christine and 753, I cover your 987. Put your hands on top of your head. Calling back your Interlace your fingers. There's another employee. Put your hands down. Right here. Interlace your fingers nice and tight. Spread your feet apart right, real wide. White male customers have a form five and threatening to throw a wine bottle. You got anything in your pocket that's going to hurt me, poke me, stick me, nothing like that? No, sir. Nothing illegal on you? No, sir. We thought we were uh, making contact with now. What's this? Knife? Uh, cigarettes? No, it's not cigarettes. Yeah, no, it's not cigarettes. It's not a knife, sir. Okay. What's the problem? Why are we getting called on you? Oh, I don't know. I was Have a seat right here. Yeah. Well, I was just trying to buy a... Sit down. Okay. Sit down. Sit down. Okay. Sit down on your butt. I, I was trying to buy a bottle of uh, wine. You were? Yeah. So how come he's telling us that you're threatening him with it? I, I don't know. It's even, on camera. Yeah, All I got to do is go look. I didn't threaten anybody with it. You didn't hold it up like this? No. Okay. Do you have money to buy wine? Yes. You do? Yes. Okay. So why are you calling 911? I didn't. No? No. I was just trying to call a cab company. Why? Well, because I needed to get a cab to Okay. So, but you called 911 and the dispatcher told you that? No, I think it was already done. And then you said you didn't know and you said that somebody was robbing you. No, that wasn't me. No, that was you. I don't, I don't recall, sir. What's your name? Uh, Shane Sutherland. Let me see your ID. Don't get up, just get it out of your pocket. You're on probation or parole? Um, I'm on uh, informal probation. For what? Um, just some old stuff from a long time ago. What is oh, that? Yeah. What old stuff? Um, nothing violent. What is it? Christ. Spit yeah. it out. I can't remember, sir. Honestly, I can't really? Remember. You don't know yeah. what you're arrested for? No, I, oh, I, I mean, The drugs probably have something to do with it. Yeah. yeah. How long have you been using meth? Um, I, I really haven't. Well, no, there's no, there's either I do or I don't. Not I really haven't. You're uh, high out of your mind right is, now. This is cocaine. Cocaine? Yeah. Okay. When's the last time you used cocaine? Um, earlier this morning. Okay. Earlier today. So is that why you're acting out the way you do? Sit down. Yeah, Sit yeah. down. Where do you live? Um, I, I live in at Motel Six. Sam, Which one? Tom Henry. How'd you get here? Um, I drove. Well, I Adam, had friends on me. How do you support your cocaine habit? Uh, um, I have Shane. a job. Where? Sam Sam Henry, Adam, doing what? Yellow uh, Nora Edward, Okay. Do they know you do cocaine? Uh, uh, they don't make cocaine, is cocaine but do they know you do uh, cocaine? No. No? no. You think they'd be happy that they know you use coke? No, sir. Huh? No, sir. No? No. Okay. Hmm? 
delivered by himself? At the Motel 6. By himself? I guess. Yeah, I got ID. You live with, who do you live with at Motel 6? Just by myself. Yeah? yeah? Wait, which Motel 6? There's two of them. The Motel 6 and Tracy. Oh, and Tracy? Yeah, my therapist. Fuck. Oh, sorry, if we check out Graham v. Connor 1989 and the three Graham factors, it is the gold standard courts use to determine the objective reasonableness of police use of force in all of the United States. Viewing the incident through the lens of woulda, coulda, shoulda is not allowed, so let's avoid Monday morning quarterbacking. Now is it reasonable to believe that the two officers used an unreasonable amount of force to restrain a man who was face down on the ground and handcuffed behind his back? Did they act in accordance with department policy and was the use of force consistent with their training? If the young man conveyed to them he could not breathe and they continued to use the same or greater level of force, an argument could be made that they showed deliberate indifference to the person restrained. Let's look at what resulted. The man died. Should these police officers lose their qualified immunity during a subsequent civil trial? I believe they should. Here are the three grand factors. Did he pose an immediate threat to the officers or others? No. What was the level of resistance or evading? Minimal to none. What was the severity of the crime? Disorderly conduct, if applicable, is not a severe crime, nor is simple drug use or intoxication. Aggravated assault, on the other hand, is an example of a severe crime. And I'm certain that wouldn't even apply because he was already restrained. I'd like to thank Dave McRae, author of Rise of the Oathbreakers, for helping me with this video. I want to send all my support and all the support from the San Joaquin family. And I want to send all my transparency people to go support Karen Sutherland in her fight for justice for Shane Sutherland. I want to see you guys in her comment section. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you on the next video.